Hello and welcome. It is so wonderful to connect with you. I love that you're here. I love that you're continuing to expand your mind, your energy, your consciousness, your healing. I just love it. And I love today's episode and our volunteer is just is so beautiful and just has so much self-awareness and also she's in a really hard spot and I have so much compassion for her because, you know, I've been through my own stuff and just watching her navigate it. I, it's like, I understand and I have so much compassion and also honor her strength in it. And it's also, there, there, there are just so many insights that come from today's episode that I think are, are key for so many people. And one insight is this, is that, you know, whenever we have some type of illness or injury, we can have good days and bad days. And it's, when you stop and think about it for a moment, what is happening? Does somebody have, you know, if somebody has fibromyalgia, do they have more fibromyalgia one day and less the next day? When you think about it for a moment, it's a little puzzling. Or even if somebody has, you know, any type of injury or illness or pain or whatever it is, there's ups and downs. And what I love is today's episode really highlights how a person can go up and down and the triggers that happen even in the mind body connection and it's powerful because it starts it makes you really see illness from a different lens because you know in her case she's got multiple illnesses going on she's been sick and injured from age 18 and chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and also um, cell danger syndrome so she's got all of these things going on but just and whether or not you know, your issues are the same or completely different. There are just so many insights that we can see as she navigates. And, and one of them is exactly that is the ups and downs. You'll see her go from bringing her pain down to then it shooting up when she gets triggered to then it coming back down. And so I, and I love her self-awareness in it. And also some other insights are this. You'll notice as we go through that I'm very strong with her, that I'm pushing her a bit and strong. Why? Because I need her to access her strength. Because as you'll notice, as we're going in, she has a lot of fear. And so if she's not in her strength, then it's going to keep her and it's going to consume her. And so that's one reason. Another reason is this, is if her feelings, she's got some triggers that intensify. So some frustrations and some fears and if her intensity, her emotional intensity is up here, and I say to her, well, you know, just bring your emotions down. She's not going to be able to hear me or get out of that fear. And so you'll notice that we hold a container. And then what's beautiful is that you'll notice also that as we hold the container of strength and say, okay, look, you've got to change. And there's this strength in there that she also then goes into laughter and moves through things in a way that she starts to see in a new way. So she starts to come out of the patterns and, and laugh. And, and so it, there's just, there's ups and downs, there's strength, there's fears, there's, it, it's just awareness and self-awareness and self-healing. And that's what I love about today's episode is just when you stop and look at it, it really does start to highlight awareness is about healing and what it takes also to get real change and real results. And, and so there's just, there's so many insights. And so on that note, let's dive in. Now, before we do, I want to remind you our volunteer, her name is Shirley. And this is part two of her session, meaning this, that I, when I worked with her, it was about an hour in length, the, the total session. And so what I did is I cut it in two parts. So on last week's episode, we listened to part one, and that was very insightful. If you think about part one, some reminders of that as we started into her session she had a lot of fears um, she also had a feeling as though she was responsible for her friend's death when she was 17 years old and so her friend had they had went to um, Europe and her friend died in a train accident and she felt like it was her fault so she'd been blaming herself and feeling bad at a deeper level this entire time so there was that blame and that guilt going on and then there's other feelings of feeling unwanted and unloved even though simultaneously they're feeling like she has this awareness she knows that her parents very much loved her and so there's these feelings of self-punishment and guilt and also if you remember coming in in the very beginning of the session she was just she was like frustration is at a level 
50, you know, it's just so high. And I think as you said, you know, level nine, 10, it was just off the charts, very, very intense. So much so that she dropped the F bomb a few times and we bleeped it out, of course, but, uh, but I get it. I, I understand. And so, and she's been frustrated because she's been hit, injured and ill, I mean, ill since she was 18. So she has spent the majority of her entire life injured and tried everything and nobody can figure it out. And has tried all of the things. And I see that all of the time with people where they've been on the journey and they're trying the food and the supplements and the diet and, and the meditation for years and the affirmations and the mantras and all, all of the things. And they're trying them and trying them and trying and they're not working and nothing against them. It's just that when you start to really see and understand the mind body connection at a deeper level, we start to really see how incredible it, it just, we all are. And I know that a lot of people have misconceptions about the mind body connection. Like, you know, it's just, um, mind over matter, or it means it's all in your head or something like that. But when you really think about, you can see the, the connection, you know, the, the example that I always like to use is unfortunately, you know, like a, a stroke, if you will, if somebody has a stroke, if they have a stroke on their right side of their head, it can affect the left side of the body or vice versa. If it's on the left side, it can affect the right side of the body. And, you know, and, and so if we look at it in that awareness, we can also see that the brain controls the physical body. And of course, movement, our brains are controlling our physical body. And so if we know that our mind is very connected to our body, we can see that's what's happening in our mind can impact our physical body. And so we'll we see that awareness of that brain body connection, mind body connection. And so as we go through, it's just, it's very insightful because when you think about it in that way, you think about, okay, well, if the mind has the ability to move every part of the body, well, shouldn't it also have the ability to then control the healing of every part of the body as well. And so when we start to look at it, we can, we can see just the, the direct connection of that mind body connection. And so that's where we're going and where we left off, we're going to start, we're going to continue that conversation of feeling unloved. And so that's where we're going to dive in with Shirley. If by chance you missed part one, you can go to the show notes and you can click on the link. Part one will be in there. So you can click on that and you can watch part one and then dive in. But uh, that said, let's go ahead and continue with this part, the second part of the session with Shirley. Here we go. And I'm going to ask you to think about for a moment how unwanted you've really actually been. Who, who, who made it clear to you that you were unwanted? My parents fighting about me in the beginning, then me. Okay, so they were fighting about you. And why were they fighting about you? Because my mother had to stay home and look after me. Okay. She didn't want to. Okay. All right. And did you make that about you? Sounds a little narcissistic to make it about you. Yeah, I right? did. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. Now, I know I put a little bit of a push on that because it's not about you. No, it's about her. It's about her. And by the way, how close were you guys? We were close. How close? Very close. Do you know your mom loved you? Yes. So how much are you going to hold on to an, a feeling of feeling unwanted that makes no sense at all? Yeah. That's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Are you done? Yeah. Great. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. Bingo. Great. And I'm going to ask you to notice your level of pain. Zero to ten. What's your level? Bingo. Still about a three. Okay. And where are you feeling it most at? Because the area that I was in feels like about a one right now. A point nine. It's my, it's my legs and my arms. Bingo. Okay. Your arms. Bingo. Give me one second. If I go to your arms. Bingo. I have the three. Give me one second. Give me one second. Bingo. Bingo. There's somebody, there's a feeling of feeling like somebody's yelling at you. It feels like a sister. 
Do you know who that would be? Yeah. Can you give me an initial? Yelling. Just. M mad at you. Uh, yeah. It's like a feeling. Uh, can B. you give me an initial? What? B. B. Bingo. Bingo. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. And I want you to notice how afraid you are of being in trouble or afraid of her being mad at you or, or hurt by that. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. And I want you to notice how much she's a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> how horrible and scary is she? Oh, kind of horrible and scary. Okay. So I'm going to oh. ask you to breathe. Thing not up. horrible and not, 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 just judgmental. Okay, so you think. I so got to tell you, I highly doubt you'll find anybody who's half as judgmental towards you as yourself. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and pause it just for a quick moment. You know, first and foremost, I love her laughter there. I love her self-awareness, her vulnerability, her self-honesty. She's just so beautiful inside and out, just a beautiful be being. And also notice the part of her that is afraid of judgments and also who has been really judging herself so harshly, even as we talked about in part one, I mean, just really punishing towards self, feeling like things were her fault. I mean, there's just a lot of self judgments. And also, as you'll notice coming up, the more she lets go of the feeling of feeling afraid that her sisters are mad at her and judging her the more she's able to let go of her pain. And so a lot of times when you feel like somebody is judging you or mad at you or upset at you, that can impact us at a deeper level more than we realize. And so I want to invite you to notice both directions. You know, if you're feeling like people are mad at you, then of course, resolving those things can be good for your relationships and also your health. And simultaneously, if you're feeling angry at others, then I want to invite you to look at that as well, because all of the time I'll see somebody who's wanting their spouse to heal and simultaneously they're feeling anger towards them. And so they're triggering the very person that they want to heal. And so it becomes this catch 22 when there's stuckness. And so of course, returning to love and harmony and resolving issues can be powerful. And so just a quick insight there and Let's go ahead and dive back in with our beautiful volunteer, Shirley. Here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you to breathe. Now I'm playing. Partially. So how much did she blame you for your friend's death? Zero. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. So who's judgmental then? Me. Okay. So could you let go of being so judgmental? Bingo. Now this is the thing. There's a feeling of feeling like after your father passed uh, that she got upset with you. Are you familiar with that? Not upset. Let me put it. Go ahead. I felt abandoned. Okay. Let me go a different direction. If I ask you how much you felt like your father protected you from your sister, what would you say? Maybe a little, but it's not, that's not a lot, no. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to breathe about a level three. Can you see that? Three, three, four. So what if you're safe? What if you knew that your sister's not mad at you? Okay. What if you knew your sisters, both sisters are not mad at you? What if you knew that? Yeah, I don't get that they're mad. Great. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. Level of pain in your arms, zero to ten. One. Bingo. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. So what if you knew that they weren't mad at you? And you can say that again. You don't get that they're mad. 
Yeah, no, but I don't get there, man. Great. Nope. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. Zero to ten, level of pain. Arms? Yeah, arms are... They're What's just heavy. They're heavy. They're not painful. It, exactly. They're so notice. Yeah. So notice there's a part of you that's sensitive to the idea of people being upset with you. Can you see yes. that? So even when I said, how much are they mad at you? And you said, no, it was like your body could relax. Can yeah. you see that? It's misunderstood yeah. or not understood. It's not mad. It's misunderstanding. Okay. But I'm going to ask you to breathe. And just for a moment, bask in the feeling that they're not mad at you. Bask in that feeling. Notice what that feels like to just become aware and feel that. That they're not mad at you. How does that feel to just take in the feeling that they're not upset with you? How does that feel to you? Lighter. Lighter. A little bit lighter or a lot lighter? A lot lighter. Exactly. A lot lighter. So notice for a moment they're not mad at you. They're not mad at you. Nobody's actually mad at you. Other than that voice in your head that's been being mean to you, that doesn't need to be mean anymore, that can change, that can realize it's been a strong self-punishment pattern that didn't make any sense. You don't need it anymore. All right, so let's go ahead and pause it just for a quick moment. You know, first and foremost, I love her self-honesty. I love her self-awareness, and she's doing a beautiful job. And there are a couple insights that I want you to notice. First and foremost, emotions don't make logical sense. And so as she was even just noticing and bringing in that they're not upset with her, she was able to get it down. And when we stop and think about it, she got it from, you know, where we started. She had a level five throughout her entire body. And so now she's got five or a zero in her arms. Great. So she did that. She got them down to a zero and she's got a level two of pain in her legs. So I love that she's doing that. Now, as we talked about in the beginning, people can have ups and downs. And it's, is it like she suddenly has more illness and less illness? But that's what you're about to see is that I'm going to go deeper into the things that are impacting her and you'll see it trigger. By the way, you'll also see as we go in, she's got some intense emotion. So I mentioned that there's a feeling of feeling like, you know, going in with strength and that's, it's going to ramp up. And this is the reason why, you know, you'll hear me say all the time, I sound like a soccer coach or football coach, if you will, is because, you know, imagine if football players are out on the field and you want them to access their strength and you say, way to go. You can do it. <laughs> okay. Or you say, come on, you got this. You got this go. You know, it's like a feeling of, so you'll notice that I'm going to be stronger with her because she needs to access her strength if she's going to come through it. So I'll be pushing her saying, come on, like, you know, and, and so that's key. And if she does, she starts accessing more of her strength because she's been so stuck in intense, intense, intense fear. And so that's a deeper level. And so point being is that as we go in, you'll notice and think is thinking about in your own life. If you have been stuck in a state of fear or frustration, and I get it because in my own life, I was in fear, I was in frustration and I had to learn to access my strength. And by the way, that's part of the reason we also, even on the last IQ episode, talked about that very thing, accessing more of your strength, because that is the very thing she needs to do. So you'll notice it's like holding a container saying, okay, let's go. And, and so we're going into like coach mode, football coach mode of doing that. But just insight, because if you think about it for a moment, if somebody's in, oh my gosh, fear, 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 and they're triggered by so much fear, you can, like it's, you've got to say like, there's got to be a strength to it. So she needs to access her strength. And, and so I don't want to say, okay, come on. <laughs> that's not going to help her to really access her strength and help her feel grounded and start getting out of it because it can suck you in. And that's what you'll notice. And so that's where we're going as we step back in with our beautiful volunteer, Shirley. Here we go. I'm going to ask you to breathe and take in the feeling that you're safe, that people aren't mad at you. You're actually safe. Nobody's mad at you. 
Bingo. Great. And I want you to notice the level of pain in your legs. Zero to ten, what's your level? A two. So, bingo. So notice what it would feel like if you're allowed to live life and it is safe to live life. Bingo. That you're allowed to live life. Now, this is the thing. What I want you to notice when your friend uh, died, notice how much that scared you also about your own mortality. Can you see that? Mm hmm Notice how much it scared you about, oh, my gosh, like that was like it was sh shocking. Um, I would say that there's a part of you that was suddenly afraid. Oh, my gosh, if I go places, am I going to die? Like, am I like it was shocking to your yeah, system? The mm -hmm. universe was scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not like I thought about my own death. It was like the world was a scary place. Bingo. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. And notice that BS. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. <laughs> okay. And notice how often does your husband go out in the world? And he's safe. And he goes out in the world and he's safe, right? But I don't feel safe. Yep, I know. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. Because you've been holding on to this pattern for how and this fear and this blah, blah, blah and punishment and yada, yada, yada for how many years now? Okay, so I'm going to ask you to breathe. And notice how safe was your mom in life? Huh? Safe. Safe. How safe were your sisters? Have your sisters been? How safe are they? Safe. Safe. How safe was your dad in life? Safe. Great. So maybe you're safe too? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Kind of makes sense, right? How safe is your husband? I okay. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. Level of pain in your legs. Zero to ten. What's your level? Fucking eight. Uh-huh. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. So what do you think triggered that? Not feeling safe. The idea of going out and about in life. Okay. So or I'm going to ask you to breathe. Yep. Me so being ask, what? Or me being left alone. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. Uh-huh. That life isn't safe. And so you don't want to be left alone. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. So you think it's unsafe for me to be alone? Huh? Sorry? You think it's unsafe for me to be alone? No. You think it's unsafe for your sisters to be alone? No. You think it's unsafe for your husband to be alone? No. So do you really think it's unsafe for you to be alone? I do. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. So I have a question. How much pain is this causing you? To think in this way. Notice the trigger. I'm guessing a lot. You will. What's your level of pain in your legs? Yeah, like an eight, seven. Okay. So I have a question. Do you want to keep this painful way of thinking or do you want to let it go? Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. All right. So let's go ahead and pause it just for a quick moment. You know, first and foremost, you can see the amount of fear and there's more. I mean, there's so much fear here. And as you'll recall, she had gone to Europe and her friend, so she went with her friend and her friend got killed in a train wreck at age 17. And she felt like it was her fault because she told her friend to go and et cetera, et cetera. So all of those things. And so she's been beating herself up, but not only that, but you know, you'll hear me say all the time, sometimes with illness, there is a trauma. Sometimes there's not a trauma per se, but it just fuels a pattern. But in her case, there was definitely this trauma, but it was also part of a bigger pattern. And that's sometimes what can be very tricky about healing is that it, it it's part of a bigger pattern. Meaning, you know, in my own life, I had been triggered by the events of 9-11. And yet the pattern had originally started when I was in childhood. And so it was, there was a pattern already 
that was connected to it. And so that can make it very complex because basically what she ultimately needs to deal with is of course this trauma, but the trauma didn't start where the trauma looks like it started. It started at a younger age. So it makes it really complex. And then on it's so, so there's multiple pieces and that's a complexity. But the, what you can see though, is again, going back to the awareness that as we bring in the trigger, you can see her pain goes up and you'll see the spoiler alert. Like, just so you know, we end this laughing at the very, like, so there's, it, it's a little bumpy for a minute. And I love, she brings back in her sense of humor. She gets her pain down. So, but you'll notice that it goes up and that she's, there's triggered and it's, so there's, a, it's, it's a little bumpy. And so on that note, and, and by the way, I have so much respect for this woman, just, you know, the amount of fear and danger, you know, she has a cell danger response. And that's exactly what's going on as she is triggered to a deep feeling of danger. And so looking at that trigger and addressing that and getting it down and understanding that there's also multiple complexities to it. So it's, it's not as straightforward, even just as the accident, there's more to it as well. There's the unwanted piece, like the unwanted piece. And so it's all fueling the same problem. All right. So that said, let's dive back in with our beautiful volunteer, Shirley. Here we go. Yes. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. It was safe for your mom, safe for your dad, safe for your husband, safe for your sisters. So are you going to tell yourself a BS story? Are you done with that? Done. Great. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. Notice your level of pain. What's your level of pain? Zero to 10. Six. Bingo. Bingo. That's what I was said. 5.7. 5. 5. So I'm right there with you. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. And if I told you I was scared to be alone in life and scared to be alone in life and scared, that's my life. I'm scared to be alone. How's my life? Scary. Okay. Not only that, but like, think about that for a moment. Do I really need to be in that place of being scared to be alone? Like maybe I need to grow to transform, right? To transform. Now, if cool. I ask you, by the way, bingo. If I ask you, do you believe in past lives? Yes. So how many more lifetimes do you want to have this pattern of feeling afraid of being alone? None. Okay. So do you want to change it in this lifetime or when would you like to change it? Now. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. So if I ask you, how many more lifetimes? You decide. No. Or you want to change it in this one? No. I mean, I'd strongly recommend it. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. Now also notice, by the way, you ready? Yep. Can you see the pattern of feeling like your mom didn't want to stay home with you? Oh. And if I ask you now the feeling. <laughs> you know where I'm going. Yeah. Oh, it's almost like this is a pattern. <laughs> I at least like the laughing. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you to breathe. No pattern here, people. Nothing to see. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to ask you to breathe. And I want you to notice the part of you that feels bad about somebody needing to have to stay with you. And here you are in this pattern of feeling like you don't want to have to be alone. Yep, no pattern here. I don't know what you're talking about. Sure, this isn't a pattern at all. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. How many more lifetimes do you want this pattern? Smart. Smart. I'd strongly recommend changing. So how many more times do you want to tell yourself it's not safe to be by yourself? 
the whole pat you can see the pattern back to your parents the arguing who's going to stay home blah 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 not i mean <laughs> really okay so i'm going to ask you to breathe are you willing to transform to heal yourself are you willing to transform are you willing to change now by the way you've heard my story right so i had to get out of fear right yeah so i can do it but you can't <laughs> Does that sound right? I can do it, but you can't. Or if I can do it, you can too. Okay. So you've got to tell yourself, are you going to go into a fearful story? Or are you going to change it? It's up to you. I can't make you. Change it. You got to want it. How bad do you want to change? Oh. So how many more times are you going to tell yourself it's not safe? How many more times are you going to tell yourself it's not safe? If I were you, I would change my tune. I would change it quickly. In fact, I did change it. Yeah. So when do you want to change? Wow. Great. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. Nobody can make you change. You got to decide you want it. So is it fearful for you to be in life and... Is it fearful for you to be alone and have a loveful life and blah, blah, blah? Is that actually, or are you safe like the rest of us? Hello? Hello. <laughs> okay. And I'm you just, need I to go. To, I'm just yep. saying to myself, I can make my own meals. I can make my own meals. Okay. We're not even there yet. We're about safety. But that's the fear. Yeah. He goes golfing. I can't make my meal. So let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. Yeah, because you're, but the thing of it is, is that if you feel safe, if you feel safe, if you feel safe, now think about this. He goes golfing and you still feel safe. He goes golfing and you still feel safe. What does that look like? Very different. Great. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. So he goes golfing and you still feel safe. <laughs> Jesus. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. First and foremost, you got to want to. Okay. Level in your legs. Level of pain, zero to 10. Oh my God, it's gone to a nine. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. All right, so let's go ahead and pause it just for a quick moment. You know, first and foremost, as you can see, her pain shot up on this topic of feeling safe and feeling low. Like, notice how quickly it triggered up. So unfortunately, you know, we can see the mind-body connection, which of course is helpful because now she knows the very thing that keeps triggering her that she, you know, as we talked about in the very beginning, we have ups and downs with pain and what can happen is that you know if her husband is leaving or going somewhere or because you'll see is it, it really has to do with her feeling unsafe and so it's also very counterintuitive but when you think about it all of the time people have emotions triggering them at a subconscious level and they don't realize it's happening and so her life is on this unfortunate roller coaster. Now, let me tell you, she does bring it back down. So that's where we're going is that as we stay in the football coach strength and, and start to have her access more of her strength and also kind of push against the fear of what she's feeling and make it ridiculous. Like it's not real, uh, you know, and so to, to help her to get out of it. So that's part of where we're going. But that's the point is that you know, on a subconscious level, having these emotions that are affecting us and we don't even realize it. And the example that you hear me use all the time is, you know, if you think about somebody who is having a panic attack, um, you know, all of the time people will go to the hospital and they think that they're having a heart attack and it turns out that they're having a panic attack and they don't realize it. Now, of course, I'm not telling anybody, to, you know, if you think you're going to have a, having a heart attack, definitely go into the hospital you know, emergency room ASAP. But what I'm saying is, is all the time people have emotions on a subconscious level that are impacting them and they don't even realize it. And that's happening everywhere in our world. That exact thing is these subconscious emotions are affecting the body 
and people don't even realize it and notice for a moment how this beautiful, beautiful being was able to get her pain down. And then we triggered something and suddenly it shot up. So you can see the mind body connection. And by the way, if you think about it, the episode before Shirley's, I worked with the beautiful volunteer, Noel, and the same thing, except for in Noel's case, it was dystonia. And in her case, I did that on purpose because it wasn't pain, you know, with, with Shirley here, you know, obviously I'm not wanting to trigger her on purpose. That's why I'm wanting to hold a strong container and, and, you know, and move through it because I get it. I was in that excruciating pain. And again, don't worry, she's bringing it back down. But my point is, is even with Noel a couple episodes ago, when we worked on the dystonia and she could feel it, which is cramping. So her cramp was at a level 10 and then we brought it down and then I brought it back because she wasn't in pain, but not in physical pain. So just the cramping. And so we brought it back so she could see the mind body connection and the, the influence. And so here we can see the same thing where she's getting the pain down, getting the pain down. Then I mentioned something to trigger her and suddenly it shoots back up and we're about to see it go back down. But you know, when you think about it, being able to understand the mind body connection and see that these subconscious triggers are actually impacting health, life, pain, healing, all of these things, it's profound. And then of course, as she has this information, being able to use it. And so that's where we're going is exactly that getting the pain down. So she has the awareness and she can see. And by the way, also, as we go in, you'll notice there's some counterintuitive emotions going on. And this is what I mean, is that all of the time there's something affecting somebody and they don't realize there's a connection. And in her case, the unwanted is also then affecting the pain. And a simple way to think about it is like this, is that, and again, doesn't make logical sense, but not, well, it does for the brain, but not logic, not traditional logic. And, and this is what I mean is that, you know, um, imagine for a moment if part of my brain wanted to jump off of a cliff. Okay. Now the other part of my brain who doesn't, that doesn't want to jump off a cliff is going to be what? Afraid. And so similarly, there's a part of her brain that is feeling like unwanted, shouldn't be here, shouldn't have even been born, not deserving to live. And then if you recall, you know, as we talked about her friend's death and then her blaming herself and feeling like it was her fault. So again, not deserving to be here, shouldn't be here, shouldn't be allowed to, not supposed to, unwanted, like all of these emotions. And so part of her brain is saying, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. I don't deserve to be. And another part of her brain is going, eek, okay, well, if I'm not supposed to be here, so it's got this fear of unsafe, not allowed to be here, uh, something bad should happen. So something's bad, bad's going to happen. And so, um, so it, it's this, this feeling, it's kind of like if it said another way, if one part of the brain feels like it deserves punishment and the other part of the brain is then afraid there's going to be some type of punishment. And so the brain were like, and I'm not saying, by the way, to be clear, I'm not saying left half, right half is doing one thing. I'm just saying different programming in the mind can create problems that we don't realize. And that's where we're going is you'll notice we start going back into the wanted feelings to help get the pain down and she does an incredible job. And so that's where we're going as we step in with beautiful Shirley. Here we go. And if I ask you to notice, how close did you and your mom become? Very close. And did she end up enjoying actually being home with you and watching you? Yeah, sometimes for sure. Okay. And if I ask you how much you needed to feel bad about it, what would you say? None. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. Bingo. Give me one second. Give me one second. Bingo. Now I want you to notice the part of you growing up feeling like it would be easier if I just wasn't here. Can you see that? It would be easier if I just wasn't born. 
Can you yeah. see that? Yeah. Now, is that true? No. Bingo. What? I was meant to be born. You were what? I was meant to be born. What? I was meant to be born. I would agree. She Someone asked you to breathe? Great. So how much do you need to feel bad about it? None. What? None. 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 Great. So I want you to notice the level in your legs. What's your level? Four. Bingo. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. So who's in charge? Me. You are. I'm not in charge. You're in charge. Did you come into my head? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to ask you to breathe. So how much do you need to feel bad about being born? Zero. Zero. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. So how much do you need to feel bad about being born? None. Did you conceive yourself? Really? Tell the truth. Did you conceive yourself? No. So how much do you need to feel bad about it? None. And how much do you need to blame yourself for it? None. What? None. What? None. Great. None. 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 Great. None. So I'm going to ask you to breathe. Level of pain in your legs, zero to ten. I'm still three. Okay. And uh, bingo. So that was about a three. Bingo. So you're allowed to be here? What? Yes. Great. So I'm going to ask you to breathe and take that in. You're allowed to be here. You're allowed to be here. You're allowed to have a life. You're allowed to be alive. You're allowed to be here. You're allowed to be here. Bingo. You're allowed to have a life. You're allowed to be here. You're supposed to be here. Bingo. And I'm going to ask you to breathe and notice your level of pain, zero to ten. This is the same. That's what I would say. I got about a 2.8 in there, 2.7, 2.8. So right under a three. And so, uh, so give me one second. So this is what I would say. Uh, give me one sec. So this is what I would say. Is this. Is I would say number one. It's kind of a lot to process, right? So I want to give you that. The other thing is, is this, is if I'm just going to be blunt, okay? There's a feeling of feeling like afraid to leave. We're afraid of him to leave. You can see that, right? So, so the thing of it is, is that if I'm going to be honest with it, it's kind of like, okay, let's say that there's a kid who's afraid of dogs. Right. You wouldn't just say, okay, well, like part of it would be, okay, well, I want you to picture that it's safe. Yeah. And then I want you to actually integrate it and feel it and into it. Like, so yeah. the thing of it is, is this, is that to make this change real, yeah. I want you to, to actually get the vision. I want you to integrate it. I want you to then, ha as, as he is leaving and going to play golf, that you are going, you know what? I am safe. So in other words, to really get this, there's an integration of it all of the way. And the great thing is, though, is you can see how you were able to get it down. And then you can see that when we started talking about a specific topic, how it triggered way up. Right. Yeah. Yes. OK. So then the problem is the normal version of you would then get really upset and angry and furious. And so then it would just continue the spiral in the wrong direction, et cetera. Does that make Correct. sense? Correct. OK. So what I feel like is best at this point is to wrap up here yes. and to let you actually integrate, understand, and embody a real transformation. Does that make sense? Beautiful. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Can I tell you, I love your smile. Thank you. And I'm sure nobody tells you how beautiful your blue eyes are, <laughs> right? I'm sure you never hear that. <laughs> oh, my mother's eyes. <laughs> yep. So uh, beautiful. And I love the smile. I love, I love, I love it. And I love your self-awareness. Okay. So I want you to work on it and integrate it. Does it make sense? Yeah. Thank you. You're absolutely so, so welcome. Thank beautiful, you. beautiful job. Beautiful. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and bring everything together. And, you know, first and foremost, I just love this woman. I mean, what a beautiful woman. I have so much respect for her and also I get it. I just understand so much what she's going through, the frustration and, I love her laughter on the other side. I love her laughter. I love her self-awareness. And I love that we can see 
that this does take real change because all of the time I'll take people even under medical equipment. And I know I show these over and over and over that I'll take people even under medical equipment and show the results. And I always tell people, you've got to make sure to follow through all of the way because that's when the pain stays away. That's when that, that I see the body heal itself is when we really get rid of not just the emotion for the moment, but the pattern itself. And so what I love is that you can see the shifts, you can see the triggers, you can see it go the ups and downs. And when patterns are completely deleted, gone, eradicated completely, that's when I see the body heal itself. And it's truly incredible. And so just wanting to emphasize that the other thing is this, is that when we stop and think about it, we can live in so much fear or anger or upset or all of these things, even when in reality, there's nothing really to be fearful of, you know, and I know I lived, I had my own fears and I've worked with people who have a variety of different things going on. And if you think about it, it, you know, the, the analogy that one of the analogies that I started giving myself was even like the feeling of where somebody might feel like they're drowning in two feet of water and what they don't realize is they just need to stand up. And when we think about it for a moment, if we feel like we're, we're drowning or we're fearful, we're panicking in two feet of water and we just need to stand up to access our strength, to shift the mindset and the things that are triggering us at a subconscious level to then transform. That's key. And so that's the insight that I want to leave you with. And of course, what's beautiful is I love that Shirley, she's, she, she can see it. And so uh, just continuing to change, jumping into the video course and following through and, 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 and making a real change. So, and the reason I emphasize that is I always tell people, I make it look really easy to get results. And you see that there are some complexities. And I think that this, this episode really highlights that, you know, because on, you know, even under medical equipment or on past episodes, you'll see somebody with all the pain and then they release it and it's gone. And, and so it looks like magic and there's a real change that's required. And so for that reason, I love that we can see in this, we can see the struggles or the challenges or the complexities and the strength that it takes and the level of the depth that it takes also to create that change. And so I just, I love this and I love that you're here. Thank you so much for being here. And I want to ask you, as always, please take just a quick moment and hit the share button on this episode. Share it with somebody you love, somebody you care about, or somebody you don't even know. Because the more that every single person in our world is empowered and aware and awake and happy and healthy and loving and loved and included and wanted, you know, but just happy and loved and healthy the better this world is for all of us. Let's get there. Let's get there. So please do hit the share button and please do make a point to have a most wonderful, loving, happy, healthy rest of your day. And I look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. We'll see you there. Thank you for listening to Heal Yourself, Change Your Life. All of the time, people reach out and say how much these episodes have given them hope or touched their heart or helped them stay positive in hard times or even woken them up to a completely new level of awareness of how amazing we all really are. If today's episode touched your heart or expanded your mind in any way, please do me a favor and be sure to share it with those you care about or those you know who really need it. As more and more people become empowered, it really will change our world for the better. That is the point and the power of these demonstrations is to create a radical shift in our world consciousness by showing everyone what we are all capable of. And of course, each volunteer will really need to follow through to reinforce their programming to maintain their results. But the point is for you to see that you really can create rapid results in your health and your life if you really understand how to use your mind. You're incredible. And I do want to be clear, though, that most people will not get results this fast on their own. 
I make it look very easy because of the discoveries that I made. You'll want to remember that there's so much more going on in our minds at a deeper level than people realize. That said, if you want to send me any questions or comments, come visit me on my website at brandygilmore.com slash podcast. And if you're currently experiencing physical pain and would like to be a volunteer on the show, you can sign up there as well. Lastly, please remember if you do have any health issues, you won't want to avoid your doctors. Instead, you'll want to continue seeing them and make it your goal to blow their minds with what you're capable of with your mind. Thank you.